Hello and welcome to another Sugar Effects tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to use the automatic animation capabilities in Revolve 360. I already have my 360 video clip in the Final Cut Pro X timeline, and when I apply Revolve 360 to it, we can see the Miniature World setup that is a built-in preset that can be found in the Basic Presets drop-down menu. When using the basic parameters, we have three sections. The first one is the projection, then the settings section where you can adjust the tilt, pan and roll of the virtual world as well as the fisheye effect and zoom. Here is where you can animate the parameters manually by adding keyframes to your adjustments. And finally, the special framing section where you can modify the virtual camera by moving it in any direction that you want, including some scaling effects. All of these parameters can also be keyframed manually and they belong to the basic parameters as I mentioned earlier. To enable the controls for the automatic animation, you need to go to the top of the parameters and in the display menu, you will find the automatic animation menu that enables the additional set of parameters. A new set of presets show up in the inspector that provides several options that you can choose from to quickly start your automatic animation. You still have the basic sections that play the role of the initial settings in your animation, the projection section, the settings, and the special framing. And now you have the animation setup section and the animation section that provides all the controls to enable the ending target of the automatic animation. To speed up the process, you can scroll up to the top of the parameters and from the animation presets, you can choose a setup. If you move the timeline marker, you can see that now there is an animation of the camera from the initial position of Miniature World to a more panoramic down-to-earth view. Another thing that you can notice is the on-screen timeline guides in the preview window. These guides show the full duration of the animation in color-coded lines. You can also adjust their visibility in the Animation Setup section where you can enable or disable them or make them stand out a bit more by modifying their line width. The full length of the on-screen timeline represents 100% of the duration of the clip. In other words, if the clip is edited or reduced in the timeline, the on-screen timeline still represents the clip, but now it is 100% of the new duration. The animation continues to be the same as before, but now it plays through the entire clip that has been reduced. Also, you can see a direct relationship between the position of the timeline marker with the on-screen timeline marker as they are positioned while playing over the clip. If the clip gets extended, the on-screen timeline will automatically extend to its entire length once again. The color-coded lines represent the starting point and duration of the parameters in the animation section with the same color coding. If you take a closer look here, you will see that the tilt section in green color is enabled, and it corresponds to the green line in the on-screen timeline. The same thing happens to the red section, which is the pan parameters. The blue section, or roll in the z-axis, is not enabled, therefore there is no blue line displayed in the on-screen timeline as you can see here. The purple color of the fish eye parameters and the yellow for the zoom parameters are enabled, and they are displayed in the on-screen timeline as well. To create your own setup for automatic animation, first you need to use the basic settings section to create the initial setup. Your timeline marker needs to be in the beginning of the clip to see the changes made in this section. Make all the changes you want. When finished, move the timeline marker towards the end of the clip. To create the ending part of the animation, now you need to go to the animation section and enable the parameters that you want to auto-animate. When you enable a section of parameters, additional parameters will appear in the user interface. But if you turn it off, all the parameters will be disabled and hidden away from view. You can check the animation you just did by moving the timeline marker across the video clip. Next, 
If you take a closer look at the on-screen timeline, you will see a white line at the beginning of each animated color-coded line. And then, the color of the line that runs along until there is another white line at the end. Each color line is a visual representation of the starting point of the animation and its duration. Let's take a closer look at the red color pan y-axis parameters. The percent duration here shows as 50%, and the percent time is 25%. This means that the animation starts at 25% of the duration of the clip, and lasts for 50%. If you add 25 plus 50, then the whole animation will be finished at the 75% mark of the complete length of the clip. If you want to start your animation right at the first frame of the clip, simply move the percent time parameter to zero, and it will animate for 50% of the complete length of the clip. Each parameter can have its own starting point, or you can move them all to start at the same time by modifying the percent time to zero as well. If you prefer to stay at the initial settings for a longer period of time, you can move the percent time to a higher number, but keep in mind that the duration and the starting percentage time cannot add up more than 100%. So in this case, move all percent time parameters to 50. The on-screen timeline shows that the animation starts at the middle and lasts for the remainder of the length of the clip. So this is the basis of how the automatic animation works in Revolve 360. We hope this tutorial was helpful and we'll see you again in another SugarFX tutorial.